What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Booze and Tunes podcast live on the Crew Network. Uh, the Crew Network dot net is our website, and you can check out all our shows from the website now directly on the website. You don't have to go to Apple Podcasts. You don't go to Spotify. It can play directly from the website. Uh, so the Crew Network dot net is the site. Uh, we also have, of course, a Prestige Film Festival happening in October. Fantastic festival. It's going to be in Banning again this year. We have given them the second annual Prestige Film Festival. So look out for details. Go to prestigefilmfestival.com for all the details. And then last but not least, Lux Bidets. Lux Bidets. Lux Bidets are here to stay. If you continue to wipe your ass with dry toilet paper. You're a caveman. Um, you're a caveman. And, uh, what are you, homeless in California? Get this fucking life. That's right. All right. Let's start the show. <laughs> the dream was broken. We've seen that all was lost. Would you be the future? Could you pay the cost? You were, will there ever be a second time around? Whoa! And the moment has come. See, my lord, I think I found someone. And no one You guys are trying to sabotage today's show. Step by step, day by day. A fresh start over a different hand to play. We look like two big beach balls. <laughs> two giant pumpkins. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We are here, the Crew Network. I am Chuck Bucks. And uh, to my right, we have uh, DK Murphy. Um, <laughs> Four chick, bad chick, paging, buddy. And uh, SG, ladies Shouldn't and gentlemen. Should we have opened up with Full House because that one guy died? This uh, we d- have not filmed it, or nor have we done the karaoke for it. So no. Uh, yeah. uh, and but we will. We we dedicate this episode to Bob. Yeah. On my left here we have um, uh, Johnny Martin. Is that is that is that his name? Shit, I haven't seen this guy in forever. Johnny Martin, dude, you look way thinner than the last time you were here. Mm-hmm. Your head fits on oh, his microphone's fitting on your head. Me. And uh, and Dick Dick Sassy, you mean Waldo, <laughs> Mr. Smee Me. himself, hey. Smee. I, <laughs> came, I came from the filming of the new Hook. It should have been Dave Coulier. That should have been Dave Coulier. But we, today on the show, we actually have uh, Robbie Kramer to give relationship advice. Obviously, you know, uh, all of us are married except for our buddy here, DK Murphy. Uh, he Ugg is, McGruff. Ugg, <laughs> Ugg McGruff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, you guys are horrible. Ferda. <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm confident that he does have some uh good advice for people that have relationships or wanting to get a relationship yeah, I do. especially I sure everybody. Do. But um well, not just you. Oh, do you do have advice? Yeah. yeah. And listen to it on S T D podcast. But uh <laughs> You shouldn't. That's actually... All that's right. Well, that's so, why Robbie Kramer had to talk to you, dude. That's it. But, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> Shit, man. You wanna, is this something you want to play on your phone? Is that is that part of this, what's going on today? No, Did you I, hear I, music? I, huh? Because you can't fucking pay attention to the goddamn show for five fucking minutes while we record an opening? Is you're embarrassing us in public class? right now, bro. Come on now. I gotta back you up, but you're embarrassing us right now. God damn it. I noticed, but still... You know what? You're lucky. You bring guests on this show. Crew Network, okay. everybody. Crewnetwork.net because .com costs more. You're lucky Get we're in the merger right, right now of uh, Fox, yep. Fox possibly buying this show, okay? Yep. Fox, and, Fox, not Fox. And somebody at Fox, I think, likes you because... The Spanish president? Fox? The Spanish president Fuck might. Eddie. So I'm just letting you know, okay? You're lucky because I would have <laughs> fired you a long time ago. I'm getting this a right. long fucking time ago. <laughs> You have not gotten us midgets. You've promised midgets for so long that I don't even care anymore. What do you mean? Mom doesn't week? count. A week in pothead days is like a year. Yeah, you've gotten you didn't get us no fucking midgets, but you never gotten one of our. And maybe that's what they're holding up on is midgets. Well, I don't know. 
Micromania, bro. How, do you, how long do you think it, it takes in midget? You think it's bad for a pothead? Think about how long it takes for a fucking midget. You even promised him. Yeah, they're still walking over here? What the fuck's a hold yeah, up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know how long it takes a midget to walk down the Those block? Little steps. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> well, guys, let's go into it. The interview with uh, Mr. Robbie Kramer, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, everybody, listen up. Right into it. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Without further ado, the uh, the mind behind inner confidence that gives dating and lifestyle advice that doesn't necessarily suck. Okay, DK, because I know you offer a lot of advice. It's not the greatest advice. <laughs> But uh, give it up for Robbie Kramer, ladies and gentlemen. Yay. Finally, Thanks, guys. We, we tried to yeah. get, get you, you a couple times. Oh, okay. Anyways, uh, guys, we tried to get you a couple times, but unfortunately, uh, I know you're out in uh, the Ukraine right now. Or is that yeah, I, I spend most of my time in Ukraine. I'm actually avoiding the winter, so I'm in Turkey now. But, but yeah, it's a big time difference. So we've had. Uh, so you're avoiding the you war. Know. Heard about Russia going over there? What the hell? Yeah, man, that was the other reason I got out. But good, dude. Jeez. But, yeah. Okay. Turkey's Turkey nice. as beautiful as they say. Yeah, it's gorgeous here, and the lira just got killed for some reason, and uh, so the dollar is going like twice as far. So everything's fifty percent off. Oh, I need to damn over there. <laughs> there <you> go Turkey. <laughs> but uh, no, what's uh so. Let let's uh, kind of give us a, an idea of what you do exactly, Robbie. Sure. So basically what I do is I help guys who are typically dudes who haven't really paid a lot of attention to their dating, dating life and social life. Um, for me, that kind of happened right after I graduated from university. I no longer had like the social circle of girls around from college and I was working a nine to five job and, uh, I was like, shit, how do I meet women? Like the online dating sites back then weren't really going. And, and now online dating sites are tough. Like if you're not insanely good looking as a dude, it's really tough to, to stand out because it's all based on looks and that's yeah. really annoying. So, you know, the, the, the quality of woman you're going to attract online is a couple points lower uh, than it is in real life. So <laughs> what I mostly do is uh, I help guys to meet women during their everyday life. Um, you know, I could be walking down the street, going to Starbucks, at the grocery store, whatever. And um, not only does that allow you to get dates pretty easily because not a lot of other guys are doing it, but it also builds your confidence and it helps you get over the fear of rejection, um, any sort of embarrassment or shame you might have around like your attraction towards women. That's a big thing that I used to have. I was like that stereotypical, uh, like, inauthentic nice guy as they call it i don't know if you guys ever heard of the book no more mr nice guy yeah it's um, yeah. yeah but i used to like you know to try to get women to like me i remember in high school and college i'd like do extra copies of my homework for them and you know just try to like get in their pants by being that nice guy and that, that never worked i was just always in the friend zone forever <laughs> forever <laughs> so uh <laughs> doing a lot of these sort of exercises to stop being that 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 dude who just tries to like you know woo him into bed by uh, by being overly nice was kind of a transformational experience for me. It really got me over a lot of my own sort of insecurities and confidence issues, and I just kind of help guys take that same journey now. So, my only question right off the bat. Oh, go ahead. Because you're handsome as shit. How is it for like ugly people? Just and like, <laughs> how, how is it that you initially tell those people where it's like, hey, man, I know like, I've never had to try this, but you should try this type thing. Like, where does it go from that level of like, hey, man, this has worked for me. Maybe it'll work for you. And if it doesn't, like, where's that progress of like that? Well, when I first got into, you know, personal growth or whatever, I was about 55 pounds heavier than I am now. And um you know, I, I made a lot of improvements to like how I look. I actually got a hair transplant like uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, but, you know, they're cheap in Turkey. So <laughs> it's, it's a good place to do it. Um, but, you know, the first yeah, thing I said to do is like, I need to go to Turkey. Take the hair from his beard and put it on his head. Yeah. Transplant yeah. that. <laughs> But you're and there's nothing wrong with being bald, you know, 
Right. Like if you want to shave your head, that's that's great. Like it's gonna happen. balding is not a choice, oh, yeah. but I'm bald sure. or you know hair is. Yeah, but some people um, can, like rock the bald look, and some people can't. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping on that. I, I think most people. <laughs> yeah, I'm hey, hoping talk, on that. directly in the mag. Well, well, I, I don't think like SG. You can't rock the bald look, but I'm gonna have to though eventually. But you totally could. So I mean, I would say that you should go to Turkey, and maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> 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 I couldn't rock the bald look. That's why. That's why I did the transplant. And um, you know, for, it wasn't it wasn't about getting women for me. I've I've engaged and I've been with my fiance prior to getting the transplant. But it was more just about my own sort of personal confidence, confidence, or whatever. Right. But to answer the answer the question, um, yeah. So I was overweight. Um, I I was dressing like shit. I wasn't really doing things to at least make myself the the best version of me. So. <laughs> if if you're uh you know if, if you have areas where you can clean that up like every little bit might help a little bit but at the end of the day women care way more about your your personality and your confidence more than how you look right we're, we're kind of lucky as guys because we're well, he more that too he's like more confidence visual. is what it's all about it's yeah like robbie saying. the only guy that's not married here looks like shit and he's got a big beard that guy right there <laughs> you figured it out so I mean, he gets poon. This, yeah. Don't get me wrong. This guy's got yeah, he's plenty of confidence. confidence. He's got confidence. Yeah, he, and I think, is it is that, that the key deserves. to getting women? Uh, I want to say one thing. Uh oh. Oh. So he's right about the friend zone thing, but I want to say this. I'm like the snake Pliskin of the friend zone. I escape that shit all the time. Who's snake Pliskin? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this guy is like, hey. Anyways, we're listening to a professional. Yeah. Talk yeah. Talk about relationships. Guys. Yeah, yeah. Relax. It takes some pointers. Yeah. So you're telling me my boy DK here can probably get some higher quality girls yeah. and maybe someone to settle down with if he maybe dresses a little bit better. Yeah, it does a better I mean, presentation of himself. It's you're just making a better first impression that way, right? So if if you're trying to meet women, um, with not using your social circle that matters more right if if you already have like an awesome social circle and you're meeting women through your friends and they're already like totally like yeah you're the man this guy's awesome you're gonna love them um then that shit doesn't matter as much but if you're walking up to a girl in a starbucks and you're hitting on her obviously the confidence is going to come it's going to matter way more like you can always overcome your appearance but why not make it as as good as you can that's kind of my opinion on it yeah, absolutely. I, I don't like that all of you are looking at me right now. <laughs> I'm not, I, I believe me, I, I even get a point not to look at you. <laughs> so, Robbie, has there been guys that you come across that obviously have big, deep pockets uh, that you can't do anything with? Deep pockets, like too much money? Way too much money, and they can't get any poon, and you can't help yes. them out. You've tried everything. Like they're rich and they you're saying, you, you practically the gave up on them. You're saying what's the worst case? Yeah, what's the worst case scenario you've ever dealt with? Like the opposite of Richard Gere from Pretty Woman. That's kind of interesting. I, I've I've got a guy that I've been working with now. He's a um, very successful professional poker player, um, extremely wealthy from poker, um, and he has Asperger's or a mild form awkward. of autism. Yeah, very awkward. Um, he just doesn't understand social cues like, you know, because of the being on the spectrum and those guys are the toughest to work with because, you know, mm-hmm. how are you supposed to read a woman or, you know, I was gonna say, you read people that, like, like, sorry to say, but women will totally be with an unattractive man that has confidence over. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> over like a, a guy that's actually attractive, but is socially awkward because it's socially exactly. awkward guy it's- attractive or not. It's like, it's fucking weird. I don't want to be around this shit. Like, you know, mm. there's that whole thing. But a guy that's confident, yeah. a girl, like, kind of jump towards that, you know? Women t- tend to go after the guy that is the loud one in the group, you know, the confident one, the one showing off type thing. So, uh, which in our 100%, group, that is, yeah. that is Murph. I have, I, my confidence game is pretty good. Awesome, dude. All right, we get it. We get it, um, yes, guys. So yeah, no, so there, so there. Ha- I, I think you hit it right on the uh, on the head there because we have a guy that uh, that's the brother of uh, Dick Sassy here, and um, supposedly he's hung like a horse. I mean, we've seen, a little, we've seen a little bit of Dick Root there, but we've done several shows, yeah. uh, including calling prostitutes to try to get this guy laid, and oh. no, no luck. I mean, everyone's super hung up awkward. on us or yeah. super awkward. He's more like hung like a. 
pony. As soon as they hear him, as soon as they hear him talk and interaction. Yeah, it, like, this guy is, you know, but the, the bottom line is it, we just figured that there's no hope because he's just socially awkward. This guy is only talks about shit that he wants to talk about, which is, I don't know, video games or the, or the Norse and, gods. And the Norse Norse gods. gods. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, the Viking Norse gods. So, it's hard. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to tell, tell a lady on your first day, you know? So, Thor, you know. You look like a Valkyrie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, 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 you know, Wait, so sorry. The, you know. Well, it was a question if, if you if you don't only talk about that shit. Yeah, our, our boy right here, Sassy's younger brother, literally is that guy. Like, he's super socially awkward to the point, not just in general of, like, high by that takes 10 minutes well, well i mean it's more than that like like we we've taken him out uh we did an episode where we took him out um he was on a blind date um it was pretty fun pretty funny but even on the blind date she said he i mean around us he won't open up he goes silent but then according to her on the date he, he, he wouldn't, wouldn't shut the fuck up <laughs> he wouldn't let her get a word okay in. so it was like he went the other way we said hey you right, know right. so he's probably uh yeah so around you guys you're his older brother right yeah so he's probably, you know, he's probably shy around his older brother, like a cool older brother, but like his friends who are, you know, these confident, outgoing alpha dudes, he's probably like, fuck, I don't want to talk to these guys about this dorky shit that they're just going to make fun of me all day. So I'm just going to shut up. But then when <laughs> he gets around a girl, if he, uh, you know, if, if he thinks he's got at least a captive audience, maybe he'll then feel comfortable enough to start sharing about all the dorky shit he does, which probably isn't going to attract her. Well, it, dried up, but... it dried up her vagina. Yeah. Like she that. came in and <laughs> came out dry. Oh, oh my so God. Weird. Yeah. The fucking vagina dryer. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, you got to understand that there's some topics that you just don't really want to talk about on a first date. Like, you know, politics. Well, yeah, you uh, understand that. Video politics, games. Religion, but the idea comics, that the normal, religion. The average guy <laughs> doesn't get that. That's crazy to me. Like, it's like, dude, you don't talk to your best friend about this shit. Why would you talk to a, a random that you just met about this? You know? Yeah, it's like go online, go on Discord and chat about that with your gaming nerds. That's a good place to talk about that shit or Reddit. But yeah. on a date, you know, you should be doing only 10 to 20 percent of the talking. You should be get her. You should be getting her to talk most of the time. And as, if she's talking, you're you're looking better and better. Oh, yeah. Boing. <laughs> yeah. That's it. So, uh, what, uh, Robbie, uh, I understand. Obviously, you have a whole list of like questions, especially on the website that you teach people right off the bat. Um, one of them is actually the, the first venue you should take a girl, um, especially in these times of COVID. Um, you know, what, what's, what's the answer to that question? I mean, say, for instance, uh, you know, uh, our, our friend here meets a girl. Where should he take her? Yeah, so the running a date or quarterbacking a date is one of the easiest things to do if you know what you're doing. It's also one of the most kind of stressful and hardest things to do if you don't. So the whole idea around a date is if you're trying to move like two people who are basically strangers to, you know, enough of a connection where they might want to get naked together, right? Maybe it's a series of dates where that happens, Ew, yeah. but you have to understand like what happens during that progression. And most guys don't really think about it. And they're just like, yeah, let's go to dinner. And the problem with dinner is you show up, you've got this awkward situation where you're like trying to have a conversation. You're also trying to read a menu trying to talk to a server who's helping you. And it just creates all this friction and all, all of these barriers to having like a cool, good conversation. So the best place to start is just like any sort of bar or dive bar. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You just, you know, sit, have like a 30 to 30 minute, 45 minute conversation, have a couple of drinks loose. Everyone's going to get loosened up. The conversation doesn't have to be exceptionally awesome because you're just kind of having that back and forth, sort of getting to know each other. But then from there, the key is to move venues. And that's the easiest. Hey, let's, let's you know, run around the corner and there's a cool place I want to show you. Yeah, to make and that could want be, to be with you more. Well, it just changes the energy. Like if you're feeling like, oh, this is a little bit slower, maybe she's not as like opening up and maybe she's not as flirty as, I like, as I'd want her to be. Once you change venues, it's kind of like you're on a different date and it changes the energy. So then you go to another place, maybe it's more like a lounge, speakeasy type of joint with uh, cocktails, you know, and now you've got an opportunity to change the seating location. Because if you're sitting maybe like across from her or next to her at like the bar, okay. now you go to a place where you've got oh, a yeah. couch, you can sit next to her and there's more opportunities there if she oh, likes you yeah. for her to touch you more, to get a little bit closer. And 
from there, if that's going well, usually, you know, there's a decent chance there might be some kissing action. Um, I would then go to the third venue. So if you think of the first venue kind of as like just the basic connection phase, the second venue is more intimate. You know, the conversation gets a little bit more personal. I like to play this, this silly game. It's basically truth or dare without the dare. So when I get to that second venue, I say, hey, let's play a game. It's, uh, I'm sure you've played it before. It's called truth or dare without the dare. The questions game. Really easy. There's three rules. Uh, you have to be honest. Uh, you have to ask a question and then answer your own question. And then the third rule, so the game isn't boring. I can't ask you, like, what's your favorite color? So that's lame i have to ask you something that makes you potentially like embarrassed or awkward right so yeah. i'll go first when was the first time you like got totally busted by your parents and she'll answer that question i'll answer it and then she'll ask me a question so basically yeah you just open them up basically by like the third or fourth question usually talking about sex <laughs> yeah, yeah i've done um that. in the conversation <laughs> just gets He's done that with mm -hmm. his mom. In the conversation, gets it gets way more interesting. <laughs> yeah. 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 Him and his mom practice so much. Like they're yeah. Irish. They need to push the whole thing. I uh, no, I I've I've done that before. It's you know, it's getting the person to open up, and yeah, the more questions you ask, you know, you're being honest, mm -hmm. and they do end up getting a little bit more spicier, spicier, but that opens you up slowly but surely. This is when you got busted by the cops or a DUI. What? <laughs> Anyways, that makes sense, Robbie, because we we took uh we took our boy here, um uh Draven, and he's a real tall uh giant. He's gotta be six seven. I don't know, he's as big as these rafters. Yeah, and uh we 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 basically found a, a slutty girl named um well let's just call and, her M. <laughs> and basically she she won the blind date on the show. They went on the date, but we took him to, to eat. But her her first her first uh thing she wanted to do was a dive bar. Well, instead, we did take she him was to like, eat. Let's just go drink. So I was like, "Shit, man, we we could have saved some money on some food." Well, it, it was kind. Of, it's kind of all of our fault because they got. Yeah, two, it's all they, our they, fault. They paired two yeah. introverts. She, she wanted to go to step three, yeah, and they right. were like, "Hey, let's be normal." Step one and two, like yeah. Uh, you got two right. shy people together, you know. And instead, yeah. yeah, we kind of made it where like they had the food, they were a little settled. He was kind of nervous, and it just was so damn awkward. They had time to talk, and they were both socially awkward, so it was just, not Just good. on their phones. We like fucked I, up, I mean, Me and Murph, my buddy right here that we're talking about, like, everything we're talking about was, like, most people say restaurant. I'm pretty sure we dominate in the restaurant because we're able to talk and interact. That's not a shy thing for us. But like, also, what we're forgetting to add is there was alcohol involved. <laughs> yeah, alcohol we did buy them drinks. Yeah, that's the only way to get them to talk. Though, <laughs> and they still didn't talk. And they still didn't no, talk. He talked. Didn't no, he talk. talked. And then he, <laughs> and then he, uh, no, no, no. We did sit him on the couch and then do a podcast. And then he did imply to basically put his hand over her. Um, and yeah, I don't he, know. He, he got to the avenue two. <laughs> and that was as far as it went. <laughs> so he got to the second yeah. venue. They had some drinks. Yeah, and and, uh, yeah she was done. But she, okay. she went to the second. She had the drinks. They came back, did the podcast, and she was done after that. She was tipsy, but still didn't want none. Yeah. She might have a case of the downs. <laughs> That's just a side I don't note. I up with my poker friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they both might have a case of the downs. Hey, I, 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 I think we just made a match. <laughs> you know, that's like... A, <laughs> that's our whack pack. I don't know what show this is. <laughs> but uh, oh, the one yeah. last thing I wanted to, to add about yeah. that. Have you ever uh, worked with special ed needs people? <laughs> that's a question. Oh, let's, not get, let's not get Robbie in trouble. Like, what, what, was the, what would you have to say? I'm just asking because you work special needs. Right now. <laughs> I know, right? He's like, yeah, right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's working with us. <laughs> Holy shit. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Spinner. <laughs> He's on for charity. I did boost the dude. <laughs> Because I don't claim you guys on my taxes for fucking special needs. <laughs> Damn. Oh, man. Um, no, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Em. Uh, yeah, my, my friend Emily, um, <laughs> she's extremely socially awkward. However, she kind of jumped into the sex game the uh, head first, which I kind of think was the wrong way. Like, yeah, she was sure. She started going. And so we got her on the show because, okay, we wanted to play the dating game. And it was just so crazily awkward watching them. We paid for their drinks. We paid for the food. What are you laughing at? That's what I just said. That was a great joke, dude. Uh, <laughs> All right. That's it. That's so, it. Anyways, yeah, back, back to it. Back to what you were saying, Robbie. So the, the last part about the whole sort of dating progression, I call it the dating protocol. Okay. 
um, cause it's literally just a, an easy paint by number system you could follow. Um, so that after that second venue where you, you know, you, you, you play this questions game, you're having a more intimate conversation. Yeah, so if you're able to kiss. Yeah. It, a kiss will usually happen at that point. And oh, if yeah. you do kiss, that's kind of the, the thing, the important thing to think about, because that means like, you two have crossed that imaginary boundary and you now like each other. And then after that, dating can be a lot more fun mm. because it's like all that pressure is off because you've already kind of kissed her. Yeah. And then don't make the mistake that most guys make, which is pushing for sex too hard. Like sex right. is going to happen. Yeah. If you kiss her, yeah. sex is going to happen. Like She'll there's no need you. to push for it. Yeah. But just, uh, yeah, you can just do what I call couples experiences from then on out. So the third venue, if you make it that far on the first date, is go to like a pool hall, go to like a bar where you can play darts or pool or some sort of games mm. and just play games until, you know, she's basically going to want to fuck. Not so long after that, if you're playing those games, you're having fun. So you're saying you got to let, let her win. Let her win the games, yeah. right? Yeah. You can, you can now, bet on it. You got to dunk on that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you got to tell her it was boss. Show her where the fucking elf is. It's too That's real for you, game. Billy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like you lose your ex-boyfriends and I fucking win. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your last boyfriend lost with a piece of shit. No wonder why you left them. In your face. In your face. <laughs> yeah, because what do cu couples have sex, right? So if you do enough experiences with her, that is where you feel like a couple, she's gonna want to hook up. And uh that's that's the whole dating progression. So if you if you don't do that on the first date, the next date, like if you've already kissed her, then you can do like a fucking ice skating. I love how you just you can... analyze my life, and I'm like reflecting it. And I'm like, oh, I did all these things without knowing it. I was just like doing stuff. With people, like, I was thinking like, you've had sex. What's it like? Great, fucking <laughs> yeah. We are regular. Yeah, just take your take your fucking axe somewhere else. All right. All right, uh, Robbie. Lame. Robbie, I guess. Um, yeah, lame. Uh, I guess. <laughs> Some people, especially nowadays, they're all on the apps and you set up, you set up all that stuff online. You set up meetings online. Um, now, obviously, especially probably in DK's case here, they, they might flake on you and uh, women tend to flake on these apps. I'm sure they do. Um, I have not been in the market a long time, but I imagine they would. Uh, what's, what, how do you react to something like that? That a women basically that start a, you know, that, that, that flake on you, that ghost you. Yeah, so I, I have like a one strike and you're out policy when it comes to flaking. Because, nice. you know, sometimes a flake is real. Something comes up, it happens to all of us, right? Like, I think I've accidentally flaked on one on the, the show, right? Like, I fucked up my alarm and missed missed one of the episodes. But you guys, you know, you were nice. You, you had me another try. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and, you know, that, that kind of happens in life. So you can't get mad at someone just for, for one mess up. But if she if she flakes on you guys twice, then she's out. And I would not waste your time because this person is just she's unavailable or she's got other stuff going on. She doesn't see you as a priority. And if you try to chase after a woman who doesn't, you know, see see you as worth investing her time in, she's even even if you do end up on a date, it's not going to go well. Um, she's just going to see you as too low value. So yeah, that's, that's the kind of the one strike you're out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, obviously, I know I know in the past too. You you mentioned you know especially here on the show that uh, that you want to present yourself well, that you want to you know lose maybe a couple pounds to obviously for your first impression. Now, someone that necessarily isn't the best looking guy, you know, and uh, and you know maybe not the best in shape. I mean, what 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 can you do going into a date? uh that you know that you think you can like you know what do you do with that situation i mean you, you, as far as impressing a girl or moving you know moving the next steps in a relationship i mean is it is it all is it obviously is it just come down to confidence i think what he's yeah thinking, i like, mean th those people that are that are pretty bad what's a first date quality because you know it's not gonna go well so you're more like hey man let's try this on this first date just build up the confidence what's like step one on building up confidence well, if you've got a date, she's attracted to like no girl's going to go on a date with a dude. She's not attracted to. So our, you can our, kind our of city, rest in our city on Tinder. Oh, yeah. There, this is a yeah. Lot. What if you send well, like, yeah. like <laughs> pictures that you, you know, you were 50 pounds less a, a couple years ago. And then like you're like, oh, you know what? 
That's catfish. You are a little bit. Yeah. When you catfish, I mean, sure. It happens at tons of, you know, tons of times, Robbie. And when you finally get there with the chick and then she's like, what, what are you, you you see this girl and she's 50 pounds. This is a a picture she had in high school. I mean this, you know, what do you do in those situations where your first impression? Yeah. That's why I tell guys to, that's why I tell guys to avoid online dating because the odds of being catfished are like over 50%. The odds of being flaked no, on are like you 80%. Right now. You're telling them to avoid yeah. that shit. Like, crazy. I, I always told all my friends, because first off, I'm not really well with mm-hmm. online, but besides that, it's more of like, dude, what's wrong with like going out to a bar and meeting a chick, you know what I mean? Or guy, whatever they're fucking into. But it's like, what's wrong with going out and having that actual interaction? Because to me, and I know me and Murphy have said this before, like that initial spont- spontaneity, like, that spontaneous shit. Spontaneity. Yeah, that initial interaction is always way better than like the whole chit chatting and texting each other. Like, don't get me wrong, that's cool. So much too, better. Yeah, when you meet a girl or guy, whatever you're into, and like shit fucking hits it off and it's going well, that initial is always like the best. So the the thing that I think is the easiest, whether you're you know you look like shit, you're not confident, doesn't matter. You can go out and you can do this, especially if you like give your buddy a hundred bucks and say, don't give this back to me unless, you know, say you're at a mall or something. Don't give this hundred dollars back to me unless I talk to one chick. Right. Hmm. And you can just use this elevator pitch. I designed it because it's just some shit I use all the time. Um, I've given it to my clients and they just run around, they do this and they get dates. It's so easy to basically just walk up to a girl and say, Hey, I saw you. And I had to risk embarrassing the hell out of myself to come over here and meet you. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm busy. You're obviously busy. I don't know what you're doing. But how about this? Give me your number. If you don't like me, give me a fake one. Wow. That's, that's fucking it. awesome. Wow. <laughs> but then, it, like, what if it's her mom's number? I almost gave like, mine right now. I just gave you my number. <laughs> yeah. I gave my real I number. Like, fuck. <laughs> like, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Who says yes. no to that? <laughs> Man. Fuck. Wow. Awesome. Man, that was so cool. you can just walk up. You can do that 10 times. You're going to get at least one number, I promise. And odds are you like this guy. 50% oh. chance you'll get a date from that. So if you do that 20 times, you'll get a date with a good looking girl, right? You know what she looks wow. like. You, you saw her in person. She saw you and she's <laughs> going to be excited to go on that date. And I have my clients do that 25 times a week. So they're, oh. you know, they're getting you have to lose at least 50 pounds. Yeah. yeah you, but walking yeah, you around passing out the, that shit, you'll, yeah. you'll lose the weight. Murph's yeah. only issue is that he looks old. Yeah, good exercise. Yes. Yeah. Hey, no, Murphy's issue here is he goes on this website called FetLife. You ever heard of it, Robbie? FetLife? No. Yeah, so it's a it's a website <laughs> it's for, for the scum of the people earth. People the scum of the earth <laughs> that <laughs> that are into fetishes, <laughs> and sometimes these girls pretend to be like two year old babies. Um, you know, I don't know. They're like forty years old, and they're pretending to be a little baby. They drink oil. He changes their diapers and shit. I mean, shit like that, like you know, whips, chains. Um, any fetish you could possibly any think fetish of you could think of, website. he pulls chicks yeah. from this website, yeah. and uh, and and I'm trying to tell him that's the quality of chick you're gonna get. Those are not women yeah, you he's marry. Looking, he's looking for somebody to get married to and have kids with, and we're like, dude, this all is right. for like okay, failed. I was gonna say, if you're just looking for fun, Time, yeah, that could exactly, be a good site. Right? Time out. You guys do yeah. realize I'm in a relationship. Yeah, I'm- but not off that website, right? But yes, not, off the not, web. not off the website. Exactly not off the website. I met her in person. Exactly. Okay, well, we're just giving some scenarios yeah. here, okay? Get Jesus. off the website, Jeez. bro. Is she real? She's bro. Do what he's saying. Hey, and, he and, and meet them in real life. Stop being so sensitive, Joe. Yeah, okay? Now listen to the professional here. Oh, no, that's right, because I, I know everything he's saying, and I agree with it, and you're over here like, you okay. know, he just goes to this website. I'm like, no, dude. Oh, like, okay. Does he have a big ass beard? It's a yeah. handsome it took in front you, of you. It took you 45 years to learn what he learned at 25. How old are you again? 26, 27? No, I'm 39. He learned it in half of your life. She has a Don Trump hair, we're all this. We're all the same age. But he looks just horrible, about. Right? Yeah, but Joe looks and he's clearly he looks like he's in his forties. But no, that's fine. Uh, no, but given that somebody that's on a website that attracts women like that, um, that want to settle down with a nice looking lady, what do you recommend? I mean, what do you recommend? Yeah, he's trying to settle down. What do you, What would you say for him right now? Yeah, I mean, you're the odds of meeting an awesome chick on there are very low, of course. So you can certainly do it, but it's, you know, slim to none chance. I have have made two lifelong friends from that website. The, um, both, both, both. You're pronouncing it wrong. It's pronounced freaks. (laughs) (laughs) They're they're still in my life. 
to this day as friends. Yeah. Um, the chances of meeting somebody that you're going to fall in love with on, on a place like FetLife is, yeah, very low. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My mom so sucks. listen to him. What the fuck, dude? But, but you, met, you, you met your girlfriend through... Uh, Real life. Through your social life, right? Uh, she, she, I used to work at a dispensary. And uh, mm-hmm. one day uh, she, she came in and uh, I used to be a pro wrestler. And I, uh, someone said to me, how are you feeling today? And I used a wrestling reference. I said, I feel like I just took a bump. And she goes, front bump or back bump? And I was like, you know what that is? Goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> scary. <laughs> yeah. Not cocaine. Yeah. We, <laughs> we exchanged Instagram and started talking. And then we started dating. Uh, there you go. Yeah. When he found out, I like, I like that line. Yeah. What? I, I really like that line because it could go in so many directions. Like I just took a oh, I right? like I just cocaine took a bump. bump. No, right? not the, yeah. not not the not, not cocaine. Wrestling. Oh, not the bump. <laughs> Jeez. I was cocaine too. I was yeah, like, you took. I just took a bump right now. Damn, dude, yeah. you're a work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I guess it is a exactly dispensary, yeah, so exactly. yeah. penis wouldn't be out of the realm. <laughs> yeah, a penis pump. Yeah, just took a thrust. <laughs> but yeah, that's. Yeah. But you know, I mean, if if. If guys are trying to like meet an awesome woman, right? Like go to the places that you like to hang out at. Like I, I'm, I'm a golf dork. Like I love golfing and you'd be surprised. Like you can find hot chicks at the golf course, especially nowadays. Um, you know, more girls husband, are getting into bro. golf. Yeah. <laughs> COVID, like co- with COVID golf is like way more popular. Um, and you know, if you have the balls to just go and approach a woman at most places where most guys don't approach, you'd be shocked how many times you can get dates because it's like the opposite of online dating with online dating. They're getting just bombarded with interest and their value is just going through the roof. Like a a six on Tinder is like a nine. Right. And that's, and and the opposite can happen in real life. Right. If, if she's, if she's smoking hot, but she's like, you know, maybe she just got out of a relationship and her confidence isn't that high. Uh, if you walk up to her in an arena where she's not expecting to be hit on, like, you know, a Starbucks or just walking down the street or maybe at the golf course or maybe after yoga, um, you have a way higher chance of getting that girl, even if you're significantly like not as good looking as she is. Cause the confidence that comes from doing something like that. Hookups when I was single dude right now, like I was always catching girls like outside of work at the gym, whatever. You got to catch them when the confidence yeah. is like, eh? yeah. and, and, yours my, is and my six held high on their nine yeah, exactly. <laughs> they were just like whatever hell yeah dude. yeah yeah that's the way to go that's it right now obviously a lot of guys too um even if you know you, you, you're good looking and, and you have a little bit of dough are scared of rejection okay how do you break how do you break that that fear, that fear? yeah so the the fear of rejection is the hardest thing to get over it's same as the fear of approaching right it, it's the same I'm going to look like an idiot. She's not going to like me. My buddies might see me do it at the bar and they're going to make fun of me. Um, and that is really the key to all this stuff. Cause there's no way to get around it. Like you, you, there's no way to like hack rejection. You could only just get rejected a bunch of times and stop giving a shit. Yeah. And the, to do happen. that, <laughs> yeah, it, to do that, I, I like to put guys through what I call social freedom exercises. And that's where you go out hopefully with a buddy if, if you have someone you could go out with and you intentionally get rejected like you, or and you do stupid shit so one thing that i do or have clients do is i tell them to find like a busy sidewalk and just lie down and just pretend like you're dead and see how long you can lie there before the social pressure like builds up too much where you have to get up right maybe people are like <laughs> coming over like are you okay so that's like one thing you can do another thing you can do is you can just walk up to people and and intentionally get rejected. Like you can, you can pretend that you're homeless and ask for change. That's a brutal one. Like doing that is like, <laughs> <laughs> he's done that. Oh shit. yeah. We do that for fun. <laughs> it did suck though, right? Yo, yeah. People will just look at you like you're the biggest, yeah. you know, like come with you. Shit, yeah. um, you can then as, as you like want to build up your confidence and you want to, you know, basically you do this shit until it feels easy. So what I started to do when I was really afraid of rejection, I'd walk up to a girl on the street and I'd be like, hey, uh, I think you're really cute, but I'm going to run away now. And I, w- I would run away. And I did that like five or six times. And I was like, that's at least funny. she actually looked at me like, well, that's funny. wow, she, 
Yeah. You know what I mean, that's kind of funny. Like, I'll give you that. Did yeah, he ever I was chase you? It's going to be super awkward. They ever say, hey, where are you going? <laughs> well, they looked at me like I was an idiot for leaving. Right. And I realized that after I left, I'm like, shit, I should have stayed. And chance. eventually, eventually, after doing enough of those, you, you stop caring. And rejection, you just realize it's just a part of the game. It's, it doesn't really mean anything about you. You know, when a girl rejects a guy, it usually has way more to do about what's going on in her life than anything about you and guys take it so personally and we think like oh my god i'm a loser on this on that i remember when i was like my whole reason for getting into this line of work was based on a rejection i got in like seventh grade i asked this girl to be my girlfriend but i was too much of a pussy to ask her myself so i asked her friend to ask her for me i didn't know that the friend actually had a crush on me so of course the girl said no because she didn't want to like you know cock block her friend with me but i wasn't interested in the friend so I just thought this girl rejected me because I was fat and uh, spent the next like five or six years not talking to any girls through high school and just thought I was like a total loser because of this rejection that wasn't even yeah. a fucking rejection. So that happens so much of the time. You know, Robbie, I got to say for me in my own personal life right now, what would make my entire week or month or year would be if a group of like if you had an older brother who looked like you, but somehow he was like even more handsome. Him and his friends came in. They said, all right, Robbie, enough of your playtime. Get up out of the podcast. And it turns out you're not at all like a relationship guru at all. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> what the fuck is what? wrong? I don't understand what the fuck is happening. Obviously, uh, he's on drugs. <laughs> Forgive my friend. <laughs> he's been happily married since he was 17. <laughs> and she was 12. <laughs> he's obviously good at what he does. But wouldn't it be great if if like if a bunch of... I thought he was going to ask fuck a serious guys. question. Robbie, it's fucking Robbie I, I know before guys. all this, you were successful wow. you're, you're college educated um what got you to to do this i mean what like he's like you know what i'm gonna help guys out and help guys get get dates i mean what did you do to, before this one and then what got you into doing what you do now yeah were you a psych major did you do women's health or something Whatever. no actually i was i was a uh i got a scholarship to play golf so i was like a business major golfer in, in university the happy gilmore is um, your favorite adam sandler movie Mm-hmm. Every movie of all time. <laughs> Nailed it. I also played mm-hmm. hockey, so even better. Oh, but, uh, shit. <laughs> Fucking A, man. Double hit over here. So after, when I graduated, I was working for an investment bank and working crazy hours. I knew I wasn't going to be able to go on the PGA Tour. And I kind of stumbled across this dating advice. Um, back then, I think it was 2000. 2005 2006 like a buddy was like hey you got to read this book it's called the game and it's like these pickup artists who run around and they try to pick up chicks and i i was like eh, that's kind of weird i don't know about that but i read the book and i was like okay it, i had some for the, for the first time i kind of had this epiphany that like you could actually change your confidence and you could you could get somewhere with women if you work on it because up until that point i just thought it was all looks based i, I thought like well I'm, I don't know, an okay looking guy. So I guess I can get an okay looking girl, but there's no way I'm going to be able to land a 10. Cause like, that's for like my surfer buddies who are like chiseled and, and, you know, perfect cheekbones. Like, but then when I started kind of understanding that there are ways to improve your confidence and that mattered more, I became just obsessed with this whole line of work. So I was spending all my time, like approaching women, uh, talking to other guys about how to improve this stuff. I started a blog. And I just started talking about the, the dumb shit I was doing on my blog. And that got a lot of, you know, traffic eventually. And guys asked me to like be their dating coach. So I, I never intended to become a dating coach. It was just kind of one of those things that people started offering me money to, to pay for. And uh, it just, the business kind of went from there. And uh, I was able to get out of investment banking, which I hated. So thank oh, God I did. Dude, awesome, do you dude. get referred to? Like, is that how the is that this how this network works, Robbie? Like, they're like, I'm hey. pretty sure, dude. If like home dude scored me some fucking puss, I'd fucking throw my friends. Yeah, like, hey, listen, hey, Robbie, get you some fucking boom. Well, well, yeah, there's there's two types of guys, fuck, but guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's guys like you who who do refer, right? Because they're like, dude, I love some cool shit. Fuck yeah. Um you know, like you got to do this. And, but then there's a lot of guys who are embarrassed about it too. And they don't want to admit that they hired a dating coach. 
and those guys don't lie fun. to you and do so. the whole thing of like, oh, this is my buddy, bro. You should talk to him, bro. <laughs> 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 he's my co oh, yeah, he's my coworker. <laughs> I worked with this dude since like you know. Or, or have you ever like ran into like a, a former student, and they like acted like they were so suave that they had like ran across you in the streets and they pretended like you were a nobody, <laughs> like you were just some scum, and they were like a bug. That's you. never happened. If that's ever <laughs> happened, dude, hit us up, dude. We will fuck that guy up. <laughs> <laughs> that was <his> <laughs> he's got like an eleven, and he looks at Robbie. And he he he's is like, the movie. He's like, yeah, you're Hitch. That's what I said. Yeah, you're Will Smith, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I used to tell right, people I'm like the, the white Hitch. That's right. You're Mitch. 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 <laughs> oh, my God. You guys are hilarious. Nice. I fucking love that. Mitch. I'm using that. I'm still that sure. I'm Mitch. Yeah. Nah, bro. I'm Mitch, the guy they made that movie off of. <laughs> I'm, I'm the so, Robbie oh, Will who? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Will Rob, who? You're obviously a confident guy. I mean, is there has there been any time in the last 10 years where you lost your confidence? And and what did you do to overcome? Yeah, so I um I was like pretty big into the the party scene, like the Burning Man festival yeah, sort man. of scene. Um about three and a half four years ago and I was you know prior to that I was like felt really confident I was dating cool chicks but then once I got into that scene um I kept running across these girls that were like incredibly hot but incredibly like toxic and I had a series of like five or six really fucked up relationships where you know girls would like leave me in an orgy um it's really, it's really shitty when you get left in an yeah, orgy you're walking home you slut yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, one girl banged by best friend uh, <laughs> yeah. hopefully that dude's not, not really married he can't yes, ride her ass <laughs> <laughs> horrible horrible all right let's find the no, yeah. So it was, um, I, I just kept getting into these relationships where this crazy shit would happen, these situations that would cause all this jealousy. And I, you know, now when I look back, I'm like, well, it's obvious what you were doing, idiot. Like you were hanging out with, with crazy party chicks who were, you know, doing way too much Molly and drugs and, and yeah, they're all out of their mind. drugs, not really interested in like an awesome relationship, which is what I was looking for. I was trying to meet like a party chick and make her like an awesome housewife kind of like what you were down. talking about with the fet yeah. life site yeah. yeah and because i was meeting women and through this through this party scene it just wasn't working out i kept getting like i you know i kept going through these series of like heartbreaks um and then it you know it was obviously you know people were telling me like dude you got to stop hanging out with these types of chicks but it just wasn't registering um because that was just kind of whatever the phase of life i was in so Luckily, after, you know, realizing that um, I moved away from from that and, you know, shortly after met my fiance. So (laughs) that was but you can definitely get get hung up with the wrong type of people or the wrong type of crowd or or doing the wrong sort of shit. Meet women that are just really not good for you and they could really fuck up your confidence. I've worked with so many guys who are who are like good looking guys, rich, um, you know, confident, but they married the wrong girl. And then after divorce, their confidence was like a zero out of 10 in, yeah. you know, in their words. And, and uh, lucky bus, she just ruined their whole life and shit. Yeah. Yeah. You ever seen the movie Casino? With, yeah, uh, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. So Ginger <laughs> from Casino. That's right. Yeah. That's great mm-hmm. flick though. That's man. crazy. But that's, yeah. So you, your fiance now, does she travel with you, Robbie? Or is she at, in the States? Yeah, she travels with me. She's actually Ukrainian. So I've been living in Ukraine for the past three years. Damn, dude, um, she sounds awesome. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Ukrainian dressed, women dude, Ukrainian are Ukrainian chicks are fucking badass. He Ukrainian said, people in general. He hasn't said anything about her other than she's Ukrainian. Ukrainian, yeah. So look it up. Ukrainians are fucking the shit. Okay. okay. Hey, you're Irish, dude. You're a piece all of right, shit. All right, Rashad. Hey, calm down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all, right, yeah. all right, girls. Calm down. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so she, she's... Um, she makes money on TikTok, actually. She's like a TikTok, uh, what do you call it? Um, TikTok person influencer. with a bunch of followers. Influencer. You know, influencer, exactly. Oh, wow. And um, so she travels around. 
she's got uh you know we just travel around with this with this ring light thing that i'm actually using to record here oh the <laughs> halo that's the halo okay. the halo wow. yeah it's her there you go. Here. um and uh yeah we've been together for almost two years and met her uh you know in in ukraine doing this stuff and that's uh good. i i, I I have a lot of clients that come to work with me out over in Ukraine. Usually guys work with me for like three to six months. And then eventually they come and, and do some in-person stuff. Mm. And uh, Kiev, Ukraine is one of the best places to go and work on your confidence because it's just full of really gorgeous women who are also like not afraid to be honest and bitchy with you. Like if you approach a Ukrainian woman and they don't like it, they'll be like, you are disgusting. Don't talk to me. Yeah. And have, you, have you picked up is, any of the language there, uh, Robbie? Yeah, I've been learning Russian for the past two years, so I can speak at like a four-year-old level. That's nice. pretty good. Wow. How, how do you say "stay away from me, bearded man"? Mushina is barada. Niet. There you go. <laughs> when you hear that, you, you know. leave them alone. <laughs> hey, but all kidding aside, isn't it awesome when like you fuck around and, and have sex with like a bunch of random girls? You know, of age though. I mean, but like intelligence. I'm talking about. And then, well, I always say that. I always say girls are anybody that's like God not minded. It. But uh, and then you meet an actual woman that knows her shit, and you're just like, "Fuck, man! Like, why am I actually attracted to you? I don't give a fuck about anybody else." Like how your lady is when you know, like you're just like, "That's a woman. I'm dating a woman now. I was dating a bunch of fuck off girls for a while." Totally. Yeah. I mean, you you nailed it with what you just said because that, that was my experience. Boom. I was just dating all these <laughs> these. These chicks who were, you know, they were, they were fun. They were hot. They were obviously, Randoms. you know, fun to hook up with. But yeah, when it came to like having the the values and the things that make like an awesome partner, like they had none of that. And when I met my, you know, fiance, she had all of that. And it was just so easy. And that's, that's one thing that I, you know, whenever I talk to my friends that are like happily married or in a great relationship, they all say like, we met, it was easy. I didn't have to like do any crazy shit or play any crazy games and things just kind of developed and we just clicked. And obviously you got to work on your communication. There's all a bunch of shit that you got to work on in a relationship, but things were kind of easy from the get go. And I have all these clients that come to me that are trying to like get this girl who is just either not interested or there's this, this big old story. And I'm like, you're, you're way better off just forgetting about her and trying to meet someone new where you can have a, a, better start because that will usually yeah. result in a better ending too well the thing i always tell my friends is this i'm like do you can have fun with anybody new because when you're with somebody for the first time everything's fun you know or try to find a chick with like amnesia <laughs> 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 we're like you were happy yesterday yeah <laughs> no, but what, I, what i always tell my friends is like you gotta be with some chick that you could be bored with and still be happy you know, like even if you're just watching tv or whatever like that's mom? the girl that you're <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, mom no, yeah, man. That's I'm your mom, thing. but hot. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm the best coach there is. It took Six me years. years. <laughs> it took me years forever, but fuck your I'm mom. The worst, but a hot I'm version. I'm the worst dating coach ever. Find your mom, but hot. Why do you guys keep pointing at me? Find your mom, but it's different sorry, ethnicity. <laughs> different That's ethnicity, it. but well, Ro Robbie, I, I, I mean, obviously, you seem happy. You have a fiance. You're living out there in the Ukraine, living it up. Um, has the thought ever occurred that you wanted to be the next damn Brazilian uh, of the Ukraine yeah. and, uh, you know, and, and live that lifestyle? See, and I was um, you're, yeah. you're in Snowden minus fucking hiding. You're, you're living it up. You got a fucking hot ass <laughs> chick. You're in Russia. You're fucking loving life, bro. Yeah, yeah I mean, when I, when I mentioned that sort of party scene Ukraine earlier. Ukraine is damn near Russia. I was, uh, I was living kind of like that Dan Blazarian lifestyle. I was, um, I partnered up with a guy who actually ran Ukrainian Playboy and we were putting together parties and it was, uh, it was all the crazy shit you see on Instagram, um, you know, in real life and, uh, did that for like three years and I got a, you know, checked off a bunch of shit on the sexual bucket list, which was, which was awesome. I recommend that every guy, like before you settle down you should definitely try to like right get those things off the bucket list because if you don't you're gonna want odds are you might want to come back to them and that'll lead to cheating and it'll fuck up your relationship so i always tell guys like if, if you feel the need to like do a whole bunch of crazy shit like go do it because yeah. yeah so i did and i and i felt like i got out of my system and and uh 
you know, now I don't do that shit anymore, but I have a lot of clients that, that do. So I've got, you know, connects with that stuff. So if anyone listening wants like to have those experiences, hit me up. It's, it's so a lot like, easier than you think. <laughs> Ukrainian Ben Wallace. Jeez. So l- let me ask you another question. <laughs> I, I got a lot of good ones. If I wanted to yeah, run for, first one was great. <laughs> look, if I wanted to run for governor uh, of California, right. And, and I ran on one platform, which was, I'm not saying the divorces are, are, but let's put a pause on divorce, right? Or a pause on marriage, just so people can. And I'm like, before I finish, let me get Robbie Kramer over purge. here. Yeah, let's I'm put like, a purge on marriages. <laughs> yeah, fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you're all, you're all one day a year. The day after Valentine's Day, we get to fuck whoever we want. <laughs> I get Robbie Kramer to do my dirty work. <laughs> he comes on TV. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not even sure what the fuck the question was. I know. What, the fuck was <laughs> what is question? your question, dude? It was a Come statement, on. dude. It was no question. Exactly. It was a statement. He's, <laughs> he's, he's basically, I'm basically saying he's right. Look, like, right. get your shit off your fucking right. bucket list before you go get married. All right. Yeah. Because right. if not, so, we're go taste step life. in and we're going to put a pause on things like marriage. Go that taste life right. before you start yeah, asking exactly. for food. Any other questions Yo, for folks. Robbie that are good questions? What's the best thing to you in Ukraine? Because we're we're gonna spend money pretty soon and travel across the United States. Ukraine's probably next, probably like what a hundred bucks more to fly over there. But I mean, like we're gonna go to all kind of places and do all kind of things. So what's cool in Ukraine? You said Kiev. Kiev you can, is known. Yeah. yeah, if you if you go to Kiev, you can go to the Chernobyl Museum <gasps> and uh the Chernobyl walk in, around in the, in the Yeah, it's an hour oh, north yeah, of yeah, Kiev. Dude, so doing that you shit. can go to where the reactor exploded and I don't know if you guys saw that. Uh, it was like a five episode mini yeah, series on Chernobyl. Yeah, Chernobyl. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. amazing. So you can do that. You can drive a tank and and uh, run over a car in the tank. So that's pretty <laughs> badass. Yeah, that's first date um, material right there. That will get you later. Right there. If you were a dictator, what would you do? Yeah. All right. Last question, Robbie. What's the future for? Uh, what's the future for you? Um. Just kind of keep doing what I'm doing. Um, I love coaching guys and I love helping them with this area of life. I've gotten, I think, like 150 dudes married. Oh, uh, fuck yeah, yeah. I haven't gone to all the weddings, of course, but uh, I always appreciate the invite. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep trying to help guys. That's, that's my passion. So, and, and if anyone that was listening, they want to get some advice or you want to pick up that dating protocol, you can grab that on my site. Um, and there's a show notes and the link is just interconfidence.com. Or if they just want to stalk uh, you and watch how you live your life. Here's, here's my question, notes. Rob. Like, this is my big one. Cause I'm not an internet person. I hate the whole thing. I'm, like, like you, I like interacting with people in, in real life. Do you think this is going to continue and it's only going to get worse with the internet being the way it is that people are going to not interact and this is going to be the way people date online? Or do you think that it's going to become more old school and people are going to start dating like free? So like, well, I think eventually it'll hit a, hit a tipping point where guys will get fed up with it. Like it, the, the trend that I've noticed and it's subtle, but there's a, the, it's almost like the, the rich are getting richer when, but the, the more pussy are getting more pussier, right? Like there's guys like Dan Blazarian yeah, that are just, you know, they have like this insane network of women and that's just growing because of Instagram. Yeah, every so the guys were crushing. The girl. They're like, hey, look at this one. Well, it, Tuesday, it, it's, more, it's more than that, too. You notice the, pro, the procreation rate, like all of our bullshit, oh, joking aside, like procreation rate has dropped everywhere in every country. It's because guys really are cowards or they're just, they don't have the confidence, whatever. Or we're finally having fun and we're taking whatever, advantage whatever. of what was no, the 70s. No, it's more than that. You, look, you look at Japan, like the suicides are up, but the procreation rate is is down. I think that's the internet. So it's like, again, the yeah. internet, whatever yeah. happens. Yeah, he's right. There's, in, in a lot of countries, there's actually a declining population yeah. in most of the first world countries. Um, and and that's a lot of it is due to the internet, like the metaverse that's coming out, like fuck that shit. That's just gonna get way less people laid. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. Mark so Zuckerberg. Fuck um, meta. And uh, yeah, so and it's just that the guys at the top, you know, the guys, it's like the top five percent are fucking ninety percent of the hot girls. Yep. And the guys at the bottom, the bottom, you know, ninety percent of dudes either are getting laid or they're fucking in the girls scrap that, you know, of the five percent le- remaining yeah exactly <laughs> bottom feeder yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking bottom feeder you fucking bottom feeder <laughs> i never had sex with a 10 but one night i fucked five twos <laughs> <laughs> including you <laughs> <laughs> anyways yeah innerconfidence.com uh round of applause for robbie for making the time 
I know it's early. One it's of our late, best. Guys. But we uh, really appreciate you, and I and I and I know it's been a couple times, but we finally got you on the show, and it's great to have you. So uh, yeah, guys, you guys are com. fucking awesome. Oh, and uh, check out uh, Robbie's Instagram and uh, any other things you want to plug, Rob. Uh, I have a podcast as well. That's called the Leverage Podcast. You can find that on my site on interconfidence.com. Um, click on podcast and uh, yeah, grab that dating protocol I mentioned. That's that's like the first thing on my site. So if you're a single guy and you're going on dates and you're not using this protocol, uh, you're really shooting yourself in the foot. And if you're and if you're crushing it on dates, you're probably already using this protocol without realizing it, like you were mentioning. Okay, and um, and this will just kind of help you improve it that that much so grab that on my site and, be able to make and uh, shoot me a line on instagram older sister. Like, oh, hit, yeah, me, <laughs> hit me up hit them oh, up yeah, on instagram we'll send all the links below thanks again one more time for robbie everybody oh, thank you, brother. Thank you. all right thanks again sir thanks guys great being here all right, all right. Yes,